conclusion? Could that be a fair conclusion? It's, I, I don't usually deal in maybes. It's possible. Well, you do deal in distinguishing between willful and inadvertent. Sure. And in this case, you concluded it has to be in the latter category. It wasn't willful. We concluded there was not adequate evidence of willful conduct. Right. So there's no obfuscation here, unlike the Petraeus case. And there's no evasion. There's no lying. There's no willful intent to, to compromise classified material, despite the insinuations of my friends on the other side of the aisle. And the only hope left in this political theater is to discredit you and your team in the hopes that, therefore, you won't have credibility and we can revisit this monstrous crime of using a private server, server that server being the server of the former president of the United States that, want, that maybe Mrs. Clinton thought would be more secure than the leaky system at the State Department. I yield back. Now recognize uh, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Hurd, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'm offended. I'm offended by my friends on the other side of the political aisle saying this is political theater. This is not political theater. For me, this is serious. I spent nine and a half years as an undercover officer in the CIA. I was the guy in the back alleys collecting intelligence, passing it to lawmakers. I've seen my friends killed. I've seen assets put themselves in harm's way. And this is about co protecting information, the most sensitive information the American government has. And I wish my colleagues would take this a little bit more seriously. Mr. Comey, Director Comey, excuse me. SAP, Special Access Program, you alluded to earlier, that includes SCI information. Does SCI information include humans and SIGINT? Yes. Human and SIGINT, human intelligence, information collected from people that are putting themselves in harm's way to give us information to drive foreign policy. Signals intelligence, some of the most sensitive things to understand what Al-Qaeda is doing, what ISIS is doing. So, the former Secretary of State had an unauthorized server, and those are your, your words, in her basement, correct? Correct. Who was protecting that information? Who was protecting that server? Well, not much. Uh, there was a number of different people who were assigned as administrators of the server. And at least seven emails, chains, or eight, that ha was classified as TSSCI. Correct. So the former Secretary of State, one of the president's most important advisors on foreign policy and national security had a server in her basement that had information that was collected from our most sensitive assets and it was not protected by anyone. And that's not a crime? That's outrageous. People are concerned. What does it take for someone to misuse classified information and get in trouble for it? Well, it takes uh, mishandling it and criminal intent. <laughs> Miss, and so an unauthorized server in the basement is not mishandling. Well, no, there is, uh, there is evidence of mishandling here. The question, this whole investigation at the end focused on is there sufficient evidence of intent? Whereas, there was this unanimous opinion within the FBI on your decision. Well, the whole FBI wasn't involved, but the team of agents, investigators, uh, analysts, technologists, yes. Did you take into any consideration the impact that this precedence can set on our ability to collect into that intelligence overseas? Yes. My primary concern is the impact on what other employees might think in the federal government. And you don't think this sends a message to other employees that if the former Secretary of State can have an unauthorized server in their basement that transmits top secret information that that's not a problem? Oh, I worry very much about that. That's why I talked about that in my statement, because an FBI employee might face severe discipline, and I want them to understand that those consequences are still going to be there. Uh, Director Comey, do you have a um, server in your basement? I do not. Does anybody in the FBI have a server in their basement or in their, in their house? I, I don't know. Not, not to Do you think it's likely? 
I think it's unlikely. I would think so too. I would think so too. Because I've always been proud to serve alongside uh, the men and women that you, you represent. So there was no dissenting opinion when you made this decision. Um, it's your job to be involved in counterintelligence as well. Right? Yes. So that means protecting our secrets from um, foreign adversaries collecting them. That, is that correct? Correct. Did this activity you investigated make America's secrets vulnerable to hostile elements? Yes. Do you think that pattern of behavior would continue? I'm sorry, I missed the line. Do you think that pattern of behavior would continue? Would continue? In, no. by, by our former Secretary of State. I, I'm not following you. mean if we hadn't, if this had not come to light, you mean? Right now, based on what we see, do you think there's going to be other elements within the federal government that think it's okay to have an unauthorized server in their basement? Well, they better not. That's one of the reasons I'm talking about. So, but what, what is the ramifications of, of them doing that? It, what is the, what is, you know, how is there going to be any consequences levered if it's not being levered here? Because indeed, this is, you're setting a precedent. Yeah, the, the precedent, I want people to understand, again, I only am, am responsible for the FBI, that there will be discipline from termination to reprimand and everything in between for people who mishandle classified information. Director Comey, I'm not a lawyer, and so I may misstate this. Is there such a thing as the case of first impression? And why was this not possibly one of those? There is such a thing, which just means the first time you do something. Uh, the reason this isn't one of those is that's just not fair. That would be treating somebody differently because of their celebrity status or because of some other fact that doesn't matter. We have to treat people, it's the bedrock of our system of justice. We treat people fairly, we treat them the same based on their and, and that person mishandling the most sensitive information that this government can collect is, is not fair? It's not fair to punish someone who did that? Not on these facts. It would be fair, that person worked for me, it would be fair to have a robust disciplinary proceeding. It's not fair to prosecute that person on these facts. I thank, thank Mr. The Chairman, I yield back the time I do not have. Thank, thank the gentleman. Well, now I recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Cartwright, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'd like to open by acknowledging uh, my colleague from North Carolina, uh, Mr. Meadows. Uh, here he comes back in the room. Uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for acknowledging your integrity, uh, Director Comey. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, bipartisan sentiment, sentiments like that are, are few and far between around here, and, and I, I, uh, I appreciate uh, Congressman Meadows' uh, remark. Uh, you are a man of integrity, uh, Director Comey. It's troubling to me that that, that remark from uh, Congressman Meadows is not unanimous at this point. Uh, it used to be. Just weeks ago, our chairman, uh, Representative Chaffetz, stated on national TV uh, that Republicans, quote, believe in James Comey, unquote. He said this, and I quote, I do think that in all of the government, he is a man of integrity and honesty. His fingers on the pulse of this, nothing happens without him, and I think he is going to be the definitive person to make a determination or a recommendation but just hours after your actual recommendation came out, Cha Chairman Chaffetz went on TV and accused you of making a, quote, political calculation. And then our Speaker of the House um, weeks ago, referring to you, Director Comey, said, I do believe that his integrity is unequaled. So your integrity was, it was unanimous about your integrity before you, you came to your conclusion, but after, not so much. That's troubling. And I want to give you a chance, Director Comey. Uh, how do you respond to that? How important to you is maintaining your integrity before the nation? I think the only two things I have in life that matter are the love of my family and friends and my integrity. So I care deeply about both. All right. Now, Director Comey, uh, you discussed your team a little bit, and they deserve a lot of credit for all of the hard work and effort that went into this investigation. Um, uh, and, th and I think you just said that they, uh, they were unanimous, that everyone who looked at this agreed uh, that uh, no reasonable prosecutor would bring a case. Am I correct in that? Yes. How many people were on this team? Um, it changed at various times, but somewhere between 15 and 20, and then we used a lot of other uh, FBI folks to help from time to time. And how many hours were spent on this investigation? 
we haven't counted yet. They, 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 I said to them, they moved, they put three years of work into 12 calendar months. And how many pages of documents did the FBI review in this investigation? Thousands and thousands and thousands. And the agents doing the document review, were they qualified or were they unqualified? They were an all-star team. They're, they're a great group of folks. How about Secretary Clinton? Did she agree to be interviewed? Yes. Come in voluntarily without the need of a subpoena? Yes. Was she interviewed? Yes. Was she interviewed by experienced, critical veteran agents and law enforcement officers or by some kind of credulous, gullible newbies uh, doing their on-the-job training, Director? They, she was interviewed by the kind of folks the American people would want doing the interview, real pros. All right, you were asked about uh, markings on a few documents. I have the manual here, Marking Classified National Security Information, and I don't think you were given a full chance to talk about those three documents with the little C's on them. Were they properly documented? Were they properly marked according to the manual? No. According to the manual, and I ask unanimous consent to answer this into the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, sort of. According to the manual, if you're going to classify something, there has to be a header on the, on the document, right? Correct. Was there a header on the three documents that we've discussed today that had the little C in the, in the text someplace? No, there were three emails. The C was in the body in the text, but there was no header on the email or in the text. So if Secretary Clinton really were an expert at what's classified and what's not classified, and we're following the manual, the absence of a header would tell her immediately that those three documents were not classified. Am I correct in that? That would be a reasonable inference. All right. 